Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But about the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. For this evening, is I think there are kind of two uh, main life tracks that one can go down. And we decide when to go, which, which of these tracks to go down right about now, right about when we're in college or when we graduate from college. One, one life track, one life philosophy is what I like to call the textbook approach to life. The textbook approach to life. What is, what is this approach? Well, I think this is the approach where you go to school, you get good grades, you please your superiors, you graduate, and then you pick up the textbook to life, which is collectively written by parents, teachers, faculty, the media, society at large. And it outlines a step-by-step -step plan to how to live a nice, happy, safe, secure, stable, predictable, ordinary life. Point number one. Entrepreneurship is simply an idea. Entrepreneurs try to create extraordinary lives that are uniquely suited to their own interests and their own strengths. And the book is a product not only of my own experiences, but of my experiences meeting thousands of other young people, young aspiring entrepreneurs, young people interested in business, older successful CEOs, uh, from all over the world. So I've, uh, I've heard all of these different experiences and heard all of their war stories, and I've tried to compact them into kind of a 30 to 45 minute presentation tonight and share those with you. I think we spend far too much time focused on trying to compensate for our weaknesses and far too little time trying to maximize our strengths. Right, so my theory is that um, we're all good at some things and bad at other things. We should try to become unstoppable in the things we're good at and then surround ourselves with people who can compensate for the things we're not good at. If you think you're really good at communication, you think you're really good at, at selling and persuading, try to find activities, whether it's cooperative or elsewhere, that allow you to really maximize that strength. And don't worry about the things you're not so good at. But I think sometimes the self-help culture that we find ourselves in is all about trying to become pretty good at everything. Far better, in my opinion, to be extraordinary in a few things and find activities suited to that extraordinariness and surround yourself by people who can help on the things you're not so good at. Again, think Apple Computer, think different. They challenge the status quo. They're kind of reckless. They don't strive for the 4.0, either literally or metaphorically. It doesn't matter if you're 15 or 50, right? If you're 50 and you start a software company selling hosted software to local governments, you have no experience in software, no experience in the public sector, you have as much a credibility issue as I did. <laughs> I think of all the things you guys are involved in as really energetic small businesses. Some more entrepreneurial than others, but then they all business operations that I think uh, very much deserve an entrepreneurial perspective. You try to constantly minimize costs, be more efficient in what you're doing, be happier about what you're doing, be more fulfilled about what you're doing. Um, optimism, I really do believe, is a state of mind that one can cultivate. Now, what's interesting about optimism, as it's been studied by the Burgundian field of, uh, of positive psychologists, is that um, pessimists tend to see reality accurately. And optimists distort reality in a self-serving direction. They attribute their successes to effort instead of luck, and they dismiss their failures as due to circumstance as opposed to their own personal failings. I think happiness is really important. Maybe like the most important pursuit in life. My attitude is, uh, who doesn't want to be more happy? I mean, is there anyone here who wouldn't mind being a little more happy? <laughs>
Because I consider myself pretty happy right now, but hell, if you were to tell me I could be even happier, why would I turn that down? It's always funny to me that people think uh, that hard work is really important in all parts of life, but it's not important when it comes to your emotional life, as if you don't have to actually work towards becoming happy or emotionally fulfilled. I think happiness in your emotional life is like any other part of your life. You have to work hard to get what you want. For those of us in college and about to graduate from college, we're growing up in a time when knowledge is free, abundant, and accessible by anyone, anywhere. It used to be that you'd have to come to a university like this and have access to the university library and the university faculty to fill your brain with knowledge and get smarter. But now that's all changed. Anybody can access Wikipedia. Anybody can access lectures that are posted online for free from some, some of the world's greatest universities. Indeed, knowledge is at the mercy of the most curious. And so maintaining a diverse portfolio of activities, trying a lot of things at once, I think is key to thinking entrepreneurially. Now, this might sound counter to what you often hear, what people often tell you, that focus is the key to success. Ultra-hyper-focus on some particular project or, or goal. And while I think focus is kind of important, I also think focus is kind of not important. And I think really good life entrepreneurs maintain side projects. When you become too singularly focused on a long-term goal or plan, I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm 35, a U.S. senator by the time I'm 60, whatever it is. When you become too locked in to some long-term goal, you become blind to all of the opportunities that exist on the periphery of everyday life. You miss all of the randomness and stuff that falls out of the sky that might actually go on to be quite helpful for you. So I think really smart life entrepreneurs maintain a short-term orientation. What are my goals? What do I want to do over the next one month, six months, 12 months, 24 months? But this idea of writing a life plan uh, strikes me as totally backwards. Talking is very easy. Acting is very hard. A lot of people spend their whole lives talking about stuff. I have an idea, you have an idea, she has an idea, he has an idea. Guess what? It's easy to have an idea and talk about it. It's much harder to execute upon it. Mark Twain, we regret the things we don't do more than the things we do. Anytime I'm on the edge about whether to do something, I come back to this quote. Whether or not you have it as a formal advisory board, the point is you should seek out advisors. And I think this, the, the numbers are vastly in your favor. There are many, many, many more people in this country who want to be mentors than there are young people who want their mentoring. Entrepreneurship is not about taking massive risks. We often hear entrepreneurs are big risk takers. They max out the credit cards and bet the farm on their business. Bullshit. This is the stuff the press loves to write about. Good entrepreneurs mitigate risk. They take baby steps. Um, they don't take massive risks, but do they take risks at all? Absolutely. So entrepreneurs tend to be creative people. Who here considers themselves creative? Okay, maybe a quarter of the room. Well, here's, here's my proposition. All of you are creative because all of you are human beings, and human beings are some of the most creative people on Earth. And one of the big problems with creativity is when people don't consider themselves creative. That's the first impediment to being creative. I think all of us, when we walk out of this room, need to declare, I am a creative person. Business plans are a great thinking exercise to flesh through some of the business fundamentals. But the moment it comes out of the printer is the moment it's out of date. And from then on, you need to be out into the world, out in the market, doing stuff, collecting feedback, iterating, and adapting on the fly.